Chappelle could film himself, Dave Chappelle could film himself arguing about a Knicks game in a bar, and Netflix would put it out and call it a comedy special. I went to go, uh, I paid up uh, 10 bucks for a Netflix account, and I got, um, you know, to watch Stranger Things, the end of Stranger Things. And they, they, there's this Dave Chappelle thing, it's called What's in a Name? So this is an honoring ceremony. They're naming a theater after him, and they gave him uh, 45 minutes to give a speech. And um, so he gave a speech, and then now they're just calling it a comedy special. Literally no jokes. Um, I guess he ran out of material because now he's being self-serious yet again. Big surprise. The most self-serious comedian along with Hannah Gatsby that there is. You might remember that last year, Chappelle got into a, a fight with some students. This is at that school. Some 16-year-old kid owned him and told him he was childish. And Chappelle uh, responded by being childish. <laughs> he started claiming that he was better than any performer. It's a performing arts school, and he claimed he was better than all of them put together. He's a grown man yelling at kids. So this is his response to that. And uh, something. I took a lot of cold shots in show business. And I gotta tell you, as the years go on, you feel the shots less and less as just the business is what you say. But that morning, that day, boy, that day they hurt me. You know what this is? This is the world's smallest violin playing just for all the people who can't stand the sound of my regular sized violin playing. My feelings were hurt. I'm being canceled. When I heard those talking points coming out of these children's faces, that really sincerely hurt me. Because I know those kids didn't come up with those words. I've heard those words before. I've heard those words before. You know what I've heard before? Like a million times? All about how you're a martyr because you walked away from a $35 million television deal based upon some vague principle that you have yet to explain to people. At least one that makes sense. Here's why he walked away from the Chappelle show. He had a nervous breakdown. They paid him $35 million. He looked at that money and cracked. Ran away to Africa came back, went on Oprah, and started babbling about how there was a conspiracy to put black people in dresses. Look it up. But I gotta hear every special about how you're a man of integrity because you walked away from a $35 million television deal just like Jesus. Just like Muhammad Ali gave up his title. Speaking of which, you ever notice that atheists never complain that they have to call him Muhammad Ali? I mean, he has that name for religious reasons. He should Next time he's on Joe Rogan, he should ask Joe Rogan if that offends him since Joe Rogan doesn't like Muslims and Dave Chappelle is a Muslim. I'm sure also ask him his, a few questions about his uh, his beliefs about race. That'd be an interesting conversation, but it'll never happen. He said this thing in one of his little uh, little self serious specials. Because after all, what people object to are not his jokes. His jokes are fine. We need more jokes. Actually, it doesn't matter what the subject is. That's not the issue. The issue is the silk boxing in between the jokes. The little bullshit faux deep statements that sound like bad slam poetry that have no logic to them. I'll give you an example. Why was it easier for Caitlyn Jenner to change her name than it was for Muhammad Ali to change his? Well, 
It was 1965, Dave. That's how time works. People evolve. Back in 1965, there were certain neighborhoods Muhammad Ali couldn't walk into. Certain restaurants he couldn't eat at. I don't even think the voting rights... Listen. Why was it easier for The Rock to change his name to Dwayne Johnson than it was for Elliot Page to change his name? Why was it easier for Prince? I remember back in the 90s, Prince changed his name to an unpronounceable symbol. And the entire media adjusted to it without any problem. They called him the artist formerly known as Prince, or Prince for short. The more you say I can't say something, the more urgent it is for me to say it. And it has nothing to do with what... So, so you're a child. You're saying I can't say. It has everything to do with my right, my freedom of artistic expression. No. Your art is comedy, dude. I say a lot of shit on this show. You think I bring this onto a comedy stage? You think people... <laughs> you think, really think people at a bar want to hear 10 minutes or so of me pontificating about the conundrum that is Dave Chappelle? No. Your form of artistic expression is jokes. Now, you and Hannah Gatsby, maybe you ran out of jokes. And so you want to expand the form. And now you want to be like Lenny, you want to do the you want to do the shit that Lenny Bruce already did back in the in the late in the mid sixties. You want to you want to you want to lecture, you want to talk. You, and I'm judging from the quotations of James Baldwin that I've heard you give at similar speeches. You want to be James Baldwin. You want to be seen as a serious person. A deep thinker, a modern day philosopher. Well, first of all, that ain't gonna happen, buddy. Your obsession with trans people has destroyed any credibility of rational intellectualism that you hope to express. You're about as much of an intellectual as Jordan Peterson, and by the way, when's that meetup gonna happen? Please, the internet will explode. Every leftist on YouTube will come in their pants at the stupidity that comes out of that conversation. You think of yourself as a James Baldwin. But here's the thing about James Baldwin. James Baldwin debated people. James Baldwin went to Oxford and debated William F. Buckley. World-renowned racist William F. Buckley and trounced him. I can name five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's probably, I don't know. Twitch streamers half your age. You think your age is an advantage? There's, there's, there's Twitch streamers half your age. People who I make fun of on a regular basis who would destroy you. What about their right to freedom of expression? Why are they not allowed the same platform that you're given? Why don't you be James Baldwin and debate one of these people about these issues that you have with the gay and transgender community? You know why? I think we both know why. It's because in that situation, you would be William F. Buckley. After all, who'd you endorse in the last presidential race? Ah, ha, ha. That is valuable to me. That is not separate from me. It's worth protecting for me, and it's worth protecting for everyone else 
who endeavors in our noble, noble professions. And these kids, and these kids didn't understand that they were instruments, instruments of oppression. That's what, uh, that's the coup de grace right there, folks. Instruments of oppression are the endless laws that are being passed against transgender people and gay people soon. Soon enough, they're coming after gay marriage. And we both know that Dave Chappelle has a problem with gay people. On his special, there was a scenario where he said the F word, the F slur for gay people. Can't say it on the channel. So the F slur for gay people, and uh, they, they told Dave Chappelle he couldn't say that. And he goes, but you let me say the N word, and that's because he goes, well, you're not gay but you are black. He goes, yeah, but I'm not an N-word. That's what I'm talking about. That's not a joke. That's a, that's a, that's a blatant attempt to say something of substance that in reality, when you analyze it, is barely ankle deep and is actually more revealing than he wants to be because he wants to claim he's not a homophobe. But in his mind, not all black people are N-words, but all gay people are F-words. Instruments of oppression? Maybe these kids think of you as an instrument of oppression. I think they made that abundantly clear that some of them do. Why not give them the opportunity to debate you in public? What are you scared of, dude? You're so confident that you're this modern day philosopher. You seem to think that your ability to be funny translates in your ability to know everything. Man up, dude. Man up. You are a man, aren't you?